So here we are, the final episode of my Proxmox course, and I'm sad and happy at the same time. I'm sad to, you know, see it come to an end. I had a lot of fun filming these episodes for you guys. But like I mentioned earlier in the series, there will be standalone episodes, so it's not actually the end. It's kind of like a new beginning. So in this video, we're going to take what we've built in the previous video, which was, you know, setting up a cluster, and we're going to take a look at high availability. So let's dive in one last time to Proxmox. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with high availability. As you already know from the previous video, I now have three servers in my cluster, and I have each one in their own tab right here in my browser. Now, I didn't decide to set up three servers randomly, Three servers is required for high availability. Now, I want to make sure you understand that you don't actually have to have three servers to have a cluster, but you do have to have three servers in order to have high availability. What's the difference? If I have two servers in my cluster, then that's the minimum that's required in order to live migrate a virtual machine. As you saw in the previous video, I can right click on a virtual machine and I can migrate that virtual machine to a different host and it's pretty straightforward. But again, only two servers are required in order to benefit from live migration. Now, simply having a cluster doesn't automatically give you high availability. What high availability means is that if a node goes down, then the virtual machines are going to automatically start on another node. With two servers, like I mentioned, you automatically have the ability to manually migrate a virtual machine from one host to another. With high availability, then you're hoping that if something unfortunately happens to one of your Proxmox servers, that your virtual machines are going to automatically start on another server. As you just saw, I migrated this virtual machine over to the other host. It was on PVE1. Now it's running here on PVE2. But I did that manually. Now, when it comes to high availability, the reason why you need three servers is technically because you need an odd number of servers. So, hypothetically, if you have two servers in your cluster and you enable high availability, it might work just fine. You might not have any problems at all until you do have a problem. And when you do have a problem, it's going to be a big problem. So let's pretend that I only have two servers here. Let's just forget that PVE3 even exists at all. So if I have high availability set up with just two servers, then both servers are essentially going to vote for themselves during the voting process. So essentially what happens is when you have a cluster and high availability is enabled, there's a heartbeat between all the servers. If a server goes down, the heartbeat is lost. But never fear. If you have three servers, you have two other servers that can, well, take up the extra work. It's highly recommended that you have three servers because you need what's called quorum in order for the best decision to be made about which host is going to run the virtual machines that are now not running on a host because it went down, those virtual machines need to be running on some other node when there's a problem. With only two servers, your options are very limited there. And also with two servers, your quorum votes are, well, unreliable. So long story made short, when it comes to Proxmox, if you look at their documentation, they recommend at least three servers in order to enable high availability. You could have more servers than that. I mean, it'd be awesome if I had a bunch of servers. I mean, how cool would that be? But if you have access to three servers, feel free to set up high availability if you want to. But even if you don't decide to set up high availability, you should still cluster your servers because you still have the option of migrating servers manually. And you just saw me migrate a server manually. And I forgot to show it in the previous video, but of course you can migrate containers as well. I have these two containers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and migrate this container over to PVE2. And the thing is, that all works just fine. As an aside, you can't actually live migrate a container. Notice here, it's shutting it down. So pings will be lost and the container will not be accessible until the migration is complete. 
it's actually going to copy this container over to the other node. And you can see that transfer happening right now. It actually copied that disk over to the other server. And now that container is running on PVE2. And all of this works just fine, even without high availability. Yeah, that's a benefit, but it's not the only benefit. One of the more common reasons why people set up a cluster is because you're able to update a host and not have your virtual machines go down. Sure, your containers might go down, but we already know that containers can't be live migrated. For example, I don't have any updates right now, but if I did, I could refresh this right here. And of course, I'll just go ahead and do that. It's not going to show any updates. I actually just checked before I hit the record button, so that's how I know that there's no updates here. But let's say that there were updates. I could literally right click the host itself and I could do a bulk migrate and manually migrate everything over to another server. Then, once that's done and all these containers and virtual machines have moved over to another host, I can install all of the updates, reboot it, and then I can migrate all of the virtual machines back onto this host, or at least the ones that were on this host, update the second one, reboot that one, and then repeat that for however many servers that I have. And all of that is a benefit of clustering, and we haven't even entered into the territory of high availability just yet. I just want to make sure that all of you guys are fully aware of why you would want to set up a cluster and where high availability fits in. Now, I'm not recommending that you do this, but if I was to go ahead and just, you know, yank the power cord out of the back of one of these servers, if I had high availability set up, then the virtual machines will be running on a different host. And that's great. That's definitely a very cool thing to benefit from. High availability takes clustering to the next level. Now, what I'm going to do is actually migrate the storage of a virtual machine, actually I'll migrate all of them, to the shared storage. So right here I have a container, and if I click on resources, we can see that it's actually using local LVM. So what I'm going to do is just shut down everything. I'm going to show you how to properly convert everything over to high availability. It's not just enabling settings. We want to make sure that our virtual machines, their storage, are on the right storage medium, specifically shared storage. So I'm going to shut this one down, and this one, and this one. This one as well, and I'll shut down this one too. I basically want to make sure that nothing is running. As a matter of fact, to make this process even better, I'm going to delete all the virtual machines that I don't plan on using for this particular episode. So we have Web Server 1 right here. I'm going to keep that one. We already know that containers can't be live migrated, so at this point in the series, containers actually don't have any other purpose whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and delete this container. I'll remove it. Make that one go away. And I'm going to leave the other ones alone. And I'll do some more cleanup here. Let's remove this container. I'm just going to make sure that everything is purged. Just going to make this very simple. And this server right here is just from one of my experiments off camera. So honestly, I should have deleted that one quite a while ago. Let's go ahead and kill it. And I'll get rid of this one as well. So now we're down to just this VM right here, Web Server 1. If I go to the hardware tab, we can see that the virtual hard disk here is actually stored in local LVM. Now to get the full benefit of high availability and clustering, and this is another thing that doesn't require clustering as well, it's just definitely something you want to do, you want to migrate this particular disk to a different storage medium, specifically shared storage. So right here we have an option for move disk. I'll click on that. Where do we want to move it to? Well, what I want to do is move it here to PVE shared. This is the shared storage that I set up for this tutorial series. So that's where I'm going to move it. And I'll delete the source. I want it to only exist on this medium right here. Let's go ahead and move it. And it's happening very quickly. I have 10 gig ethernet. It's a beautiful thing. 
It's already done actually. So what I'm going to do is just wait for this to refresh. There's probably a few other scans or checks that it's doing in the background. I'll let that finish and I'll be right back as soon as this finishes moving. And now it's done. You'll notice that the hard disk is now on PVE shared. So I'll start up the VM. You really shouldn't notice a whole lot different here. Now to be fair, this particular VM might be a little slower because shared storage in my case is actually using spinning rust hard drives. So yeah, there might be a little bit of a loss in performance, but it's going to be okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just log in real quick because I don't remember what the IP address was of this host. It's 10.10.10.205. So what I'll do is switch over here to a terminal. Let's set up a ping. And now I have a continuous ping over to that server. Now what I'm gonna do is live migrate this server back to PVE1. In the previous video, I already showed you how to do that. But in that video, I didn't actually have this disk on shared storage, so it took a minute or two, which isn't really bad, but it could be a lot faster. Let's see how fast this is actually going to go. Let's migrate it. We're going to migrate it again to PVE1. And it's done. So I made sure not to edit that part of the video. Normally I do edit these particular scenes to make them a little bit faster. So I didn't actually edit this part of the video up until task OK appeared on the screen. So that was pretty quick. And it's still pinging. Let's move it back to the other server. And I'm going to watch the pings more closely. Let's see if one gets dropped. Now, it didn't actually lose a ping, but what I did notice is where it says right here, 4.7 milliseconds. It did actually pause on that for a little bit longer than the others. So it, there was a little bit of a delay, but it didn't actually miss anything. So nothing ever went down. And of course, it's already on the other server. So again, everything that I just showed you guys is par for the course when it comes to clustering. Now, let's take a look at enabling high availability and have even more fun. But the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that the virtual machine that we're going to add to high availability is shut down. So I'll gracefully shut down this one right here. And now that VM is, well, shut down. So basically what I'm going to do is add this virtual machine right here to high availability. If you have more than one virtual machine that you wanna have enabled for high availability, then you'll set that up on each of those. But since I only have this one virtual machine now, I'm just going to focus on that one. I'm gonna click on Data Center. I'm going to scroll down right here to HA. I'll click Add, and then I'll add Web Server 1. I want it to be started, and I'm going to leave Max Restart and Max Relocate both at one. Those are the default values. Essentially, if it needs to restart a virtual machine, it's only going to try so many times it defaults to one. That should be good enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at one and it'll try a maximum of one time to relocate the server. You can increase this if you want to, but honestly, if you need to increase these to higher numbers, then I would think that your environment probably has bigger problems to worry about than high availability. Anyway, I'll click add. And we can see that it's added right here. Now, if you recall, this virtual machine was shut down, but the desired state was to have it started, so it automatically started it for us. At this point, if the node that this virtual machine is running on has a problem, it's going to restart the virtual machine on another node. So what I'm going to do is actually simulate this by logging into my switch. I'll do this off camera real quick. And I'm actually going to disable the network port that this host is actually using for the heartbeat. Essentially, I'm just going to pull the plug on it. So I just disabled the port and any time now, this should actually show that it's no longer available. In fact, I'll click on it. Let's check the status right here. 
As you can see, it's having a little bit of trouble reaching this host, and the X already appeared right here, so it's definitely down. It's still powered on, I just disabled the network port for this particular interface, so Proxmox has no way of actually communicating with it. So I just went over to another tab and I'm on this server right here. If you recall, that server was running on PVE2. And shortly, it should actually go to another machine. All right, so I had to do a little bit of behind the scenes work here, but as you can see, the virtual machine did in fact restart on PVE1. The reason why I didn't do that right away is because, well, actually I disabled the wrong network port. I actually disabled the management network on this server, not the network that the virtual machine was actually using. But as soon as I disabled that other port, the correct port, it went ahead and restarted the virtual machine over here on PVE1, because as you can see here, PVE2 is down, it's not accessible. So we can see that high availability is actually working. Now what I'm going to do is re-enable the network right now, and we'll see this node right here come back online. All right, so I've re-enabled the ports for PVE2. The switch that I'm using takes a minute or so to reprovision when I make a change like that, and it should be online here shortly. Actually, I already see some question marks here, so something is happening. It looks like it's coming back online right now. And there it is. We have the green emblem next to it, so it's actually back up and running. And this server here is happily running on PVE1. What I'm going to do is just migrate it back over to the other server. And it requested the migration. We can see that it's actually in the process of moving and it's already here and it's done. So as you can see, high availability is working. It's definitely something that you should take advantage of if you can, if you have the appropriate hardware. And if you do, well, why not? But anyway, we were able to set up high availability in this video. We can see that it's clearly working, and that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for checking out this series. I really appreciate it, and I mean that. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys because you guys helped make this happen for me. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing, and I'm having so much fun creating these videos for you guys. Now, if you want to help me out even further, please share this content with other people. You can share it on your favorite social networking group. You can put an ad on a billboard. Okay, well, don't do that. That's expensive. But just feel free to share this content with other people and spread the learning. That would be awesome. Now, I'll have other Proxmox videos on my channel here very soon. But for right now, that's the end of this particular series. I again appreciate you guys, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy your day.